Finally, a game where I can have my team roster be exclusively Wolverine and people he slept with. Hey, you guys like Ultimate Alliance? Wish there was another one of those games to play? No, not that one. X-Men Legends is a classic game and a precursor to the Ultimate Alliance series in pretty much every way. In some ways, it's better than its successor, and in other ways, it's... Well, it really shows its age, and it's kind of lame and poopy and stuff. Making this video was a pain in the ass, and I'd like to share that searing pain with you, dear viewer. Normally, I start these off by delving into some backstory behind the game, or asking a larger question about it. Or I guess trying to explain why that particular game is important. But you know what? I'm tired. 2020 has been a shit year, and I've been trying to review this game since January. Making this video is my Moby Dick. It just keeps haunting me, and every time I go after it, I lose more and more patience and sanity. This script is a jumbled mess of about five different drafts of various tones because I was all happy and upbeat when I first started writing this, and then I had to go to a bunch of family funerals, and then there was a sad and depressed draft, and then I got incredibly burned out from being overworked to make ends meet after I signed a terrible deal with a shitty multi-channel network who made dozens of empty promises before holding me under a contract and sucking away 60-70% to 70 of my monthly income for a year. Fuck you. You lied to me. And now there's probably some stuff in there written when I was feeling more neutral and able to handle my emotions. This thing's going to be a train wreck. This is the YouTube video equivalent of cutting down a tree and counting all the different colored rings. You'll see the layers of rage dating back almost an entire year. So, with that in mind, here's a review of a game that kicked my ass. You know, for someone who is named after an X-Men character, I find myself not often getting too invested in X-Men related stuff. Sure, I've watched all the cartoons because the X-Boys managed to have three awesome ones in a row, but that's kind of it. Read a lot of Wolverine solo comics, but other than that, X-Men weren't really my thing. So why am I reviewing this game? I've always gravitated towards other characters. Primarily ones that look like Spider-Man, but kill people. And also Spider-Man. X-Men Legends Review, requested by Chris Rodriguez on Patreon for the $100 tier. If you have a topic for a review that you desperately want to hear my opinion on, you can donate to that tier or maybe one of these more reasonable lower ones. If I like your suggestion, I'll get around to it eventually. All right, the game. Okay. <sighs> the game. I ain't going out like this. <laughs> the game. <laughs> the game. <laughs> it's basically the same as Ultimate Alliance, except you can't punch guys when you grab them. If you haven't played that, it's essentially an overhead dungeon crawler with light RPG elements where you can play as four X-Men at once. Unlike Ultimate Alliance, Wolverine's healing factor is not a character trait that happens automatically, you have to buy that upgrade. And it sucks unless you level it up a bunch of times. Weirdly enough, this game starts you out with a single player mission. That's odd considering how fun the co-op features are, but this was the first game of its kind and I suppose they didn't realize how much people would like that multiplayer aspect. We start off in the middle of a normal day in Mutantville, where the mean old homo sapiens have kidnapped some mutant girl, who was then kidnapped by Blob and Mystique from the humans, and then finally kidnapped by Wolverine and Cyclops. But it's, it's good, it's cool when they do it. After getting passed around more times than Wolverine's nether regions at Cyclops and Jean's wedding reception, mutant girl Allison is taken to the X-Mansion and they try to recruit her to the team since she's got some sick radical powers. For the majority of the game, you can play as the X-Men proper, but you experience the story and are introduced to the world and characters through Allison. It's kind of genius to have a character that's just a normal person going through their origin story as a vehicle for the player to explore all this. It's kind of like what they're doing with Kamala Khan in that new Avengers game that everyone hates. It's also the opposite of X-Men Destiny, where you play as a boring nobody character while all the cool and interesting X-Men just walk by and say hello occasionally. I think it's also pretty neato that unlike Ultimate Alliance, almost every line of dialogue in this game is voice acted instead of just plain on-screen text. And you are? The name's Jubilation Lee, but everyone around here calls me Jubilee. 
You'd think that the future games wouldn't have stepped down in that regard, but I, I think there was just less of it to record for this one, so it was more manageable. The voice cast is pretty great, with a lot of A-list VAs from the time, including Steve Blum. Hey bub, you should have called in sick today. This is his first time playing Wolverine, which is pretty cool because a lot of people consider him the definitive voice for that character, and he's done it dozens of times. Even recently in- oh no, never mind. Oh shit, they got Patrick Stewart for this game! Although it won't be easy, my students are quite fond of me. They call me Professor X. Because you look exactly like- Because I'm always trying to sell them ecstasy! I think of all the games in this series, this one has the best hub world area to explore between missions. You can go explore pretty much the entire X-Men Man Mansion. They have a decent take on every major room or location, and every playable X-Men Sin has a unique bedroom that says something about them and their personality. Oh hey, it's Iceman's room! Hmm... Yeah... You must be Bobby Drake. Hey, it's nice to see my name's gotten around. Did the other girls tell you what a cool dude I am? But enough about me, let's talk about you. It's always nice to meet a new student, especially one as pretty as you. Okay, Bobby, we don't have to have this conversation today. That's entirely up to you. Whenever you're comfortable, I'm good. But you are trying way the fuck too hard. Alright, enough screwing around at the house. Time for a mission. The Brotherhood of Mutants is causing trouble in Alaska, so we go follow them and stuff and things and fuck this game is hard. Alright, so I know I'm already playing with a handicap by going through this game solo when it's designed for four players, but that wasn't a problem in any of the other games in the Legends and Alliance series. The two main issues gameplay-wise are the way you collect health and the way enemies bombard you. When you take damage, you have to manually heal with one of these red potion things, but they're limited and you have to find them. They don't restore very much health, and in a bind, when your health is low, you may find yourself hammering the button to use them, and that drains your supplies really fast. Should one of the characters on your team die, they stay dead for the rest of the level until you spend 200 of this random currency to revive them. This isn't like the system in Ultimate Alliance where you get health back from beating enemies and every character can come back after a short time delay. So, they definitely improved on that in the later games. Good job, love you Raven Software or whoever. God, I hate the way this game floods in dozens and dozens of enemies. This is the second level in the game and I'm getting so overwhelmed by enemies, the only character I can seem to keep alive is Wolverine because he has the regenerating health upgrade, which I had to unlock. Enemies with damage or health modifiers are thrown at you so commonly that you have to keep switching up what character you're using to beat them. In theory, that's a good way to make every character feel useful, but all of them except Logan are made of cardboard and break their necks on a gentle breeze. These enemies can even use a big shockwave area of effect attack that can set off explosives and kill the whole team in one move. To avoid that, I have to either lure enemies away from the thing or shoot the explosives from a distance to lower the risk. You can't have multiple save files for whatever dumb reason, so it just overwrites the old one every time, and I have this constant anxiety with each save that this will be the one where I have such low currency, health, and items that I could potentially break the game and not be able to progress anymore. These explosive barrels keep fucking me up. I need to just stay at a distance and lame it out by poking the enemies with Cyclops' beam. This is the same feeling I get when I was first getting into survival horror games. Back then, I wasn't as good with resource management, hoarding every item I ever found, and being choosy about which enemies to actually fight. When I started this game, I figured it would just be like any other third-person action thingy where you don't have to take that stuff as seriously. Look, I know you're writing that comment. I can feel your Dorito dust encrusted keyboard clacking away so you can tell me you were eight years old and beat this game just fine. I don't care. Save it. I'm supposed to be honest about my experience with the game. Yes, I found it difficult because I played a little recklessly at the start of the game. No, this does not mean my intelligence and moral integrity are in question and you should stop hovering your mouse over that unsubscribe button, sir or madam. Jesus Christ. Also... This game is not bad, because it's hard. I shouldn't have to say that. It's hard, because it's hard. Have you ever been tired, Red? The fucking barrels, Jesus Christ! Normally, I just start jumping through the level and avoiding enemies outright, but Iceman is dead and I can't progress until I revive him to use him to make this bridge. 
So I'm caught in this infinite loop of trying to fight this same small group of insanely tough enemies, hoping they'll accidentally drop the currency I need to revive a character. But whether or not it drops is completely random from either enemies or objects in the environment. I must have been stuck in this room for hours. I, I give up. I... I need to replay everything up until this point. <sighs> Alright, let's try this again. It's been a few weeks. This time I sprint my way through everything. I collect and hoard resources like a pack rat madman preparing for the apocalypse and all of its unresolved story threads. Get stuck on this... furniture. Get off! Let me just... Jesus! Pummel all the bosses Ultimate Alliance style, lose all of my team except Iceman and Wolverine, and fuck it, I won't spend those revival red crystal things until I'm past this bridge. I won't risk losing Iceman. I have to make up for what happened. God, there's so much everything happening! We did it! We made it, everyone! Oh my god, I never thought I'd make it past this trial! Oh, it's like, it's like this game has become a metaphor for my depression, and in beating it, I've overcome my perpetual sadness. Oh, this is only mission two. Well, depression's permanent. Moving on. Moving on, the gameplay gets a lot easier if you just play it really aggressively and make sure to level up the damage on all of your ex-bros. My usual trick is to hammer the button telling the AI partners to attack a single enemy alongside spamming special attacks so we stunlock every bad guy one at a time. Kinda like what they did to me before I got past the stupid ice bridge. Alright, relatively easy boss and back to the X-Mansion. Getting the hang of this. Though, even with a more aggressive playstyle and better resource management, this game is still pretty difficult. It really doesn't stop with the overwhelming enemy numbers. I feel like I can never level up enough to get a leg up on the problem. Before these flashback sequences where you play a few old X-Men stories, it's important to save because you can't revive your team during these missions and it's yet another opportunity to get yourself permanently stuck. My strategy for fighting the Sentinels is to stand practically between their legs because you're so close to them they can't figure out how to target you and just shoot lasers wildly at the floor past your head. I'm noticing a pattern here where progressing the game and fighting basic enemies requires a lot of brute force, and it feels really awkward and exhausting. This isn't a game I can just turn off my mind and play. I gotta really hunker down and focus or I'm going to get stuck again. I guess that's the biggest overall issue with this gameplay. It's not fine-tuned or polished enough to be comfortable, and always feels stressful. This really does feel like an unfinished prototype for later games by the same developers, and because of that, it's not really all that fun for me. Playing this game feels like manual labor instead of a fun adventure. You never feel like X-Men Legends! God, these Morlocks are so violent. Come on, fellas, remember that Christmas special? I thought we were on good terms. Oh wait, no one watched that. Beyond that, this game doesn't offer much else. The story is pretty basic and serves to just get you into a handful of recognizable X-Men locations, like the Morlock Tunnels, Laboratory in a Snowy Forest. That's where I quit writing my script about five months ago. I just wanted to focus on other videos that would be more fun to make, or spending time with my loved ones because life is too short to just be miserable all day on purpose. I haven't ever left a game review unfinished before, but I don't know what else to do. This game isn't fun for me, it's just tedious. And the whole point of a game is to have fun. Arguably the greatest game reviewer of all time has had a history of only halfway finishing games, but he's also kind of earned that. If only someone could come in and talk about the later half of this game so I could rest. To me, my X-Men. Oh, there's, uh, there's only one of you. Okay. Hey, Xavier. Hello. Not you, Baldy. Looks like you could use a hand. Boy, do I. Let's do a fastball special, Mr. Has the Game on PC, man. Well, PC is the superior race. Diego. Oh, all right, we're doing this. Hey, what's up, everyone? Beast. Oh, Beast, come on. Put some shoes on. Nobody wants to smell that. 
Rogue, hey, how's it going? You uh, doing anything? After no? It's cool? Alright. Hey, I was told Wolverine was going to be here. I wanted to show him my shirt. No? Not today? Alright, that's cool. Anyone got a one-liner? No? Me? Alright, let's do this. Everyone, please subscribe to my channel after this. If only me and Xavier weren't separated by thousands of miles and a global pandemic worse than the X-Men movie's continuity, we could have played this game how it was meant to be played. Over a weekend sleepover, stacks of pizza boxes, and wholesome couch co-op. But we'll settle for the next best thing. Online multiplayer. Nah, this game's old. Well, we can't play the game co-op, but at least we can carry on the sentiment by splitting this review in half between us. To echo some of Xavier's thoughts, this game shows its age by having a number of design flaws that result in the game straight up getting locked. Having character specific environmental puzzles is a cool idea, but having those characters be inaccessible after dying unless you have enough of the limited currency to revive them that can be found within levels is an obvious game breaking problem. And it's weird how most of them require Iceman. Nothing against the guy, but he is so vital, he should have been slapped in the middle of the box art. Other issues that were eventually ironed out in its successor, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, are the health and energy pickups. Having these be energy orbs that automatically gravitate towards the player allows for your focus to solely remain on combat, especially since things can get really hectic. Having to constantly glance at your health bar and making sure that you don't exhaust your resources ruins the pace of combat. I do think combat feels a bit better in X-Men Legends. Your kicks and punches feel impactful. They're supported by good sound design and the fact that the screen has this slight shake every time you land a hit on an enemy. This was missing in Marvel Ultimate Lines, and it made the combat feel more hollow by comparison. And this may seem like a bit of a nitpick, but it was really underwhelming not having a number of different costumes for each X-Men. Seeing all the different costumes you can put on your heroes in Ultimate Alliance was one of my favorite parts of the game. Here, there isn't much variety. Alright, let's get this quest to stop the Brotherhood on the road. Gambit was being held captive by the Morlocks after they caught him spying on them. He overheard them planning to get in cahoots with the Brotherhood. After rescuing him, it's off to a ship carrier where we need to stop the Brotherhood from freeing Magneto. I like this level quite a bit, since there's a point where the ship starts to fall apart and the team needs to use their powers to hold it together. Like using Cyclops optic blast to weld the steel walls shut. Wait, hold on, I thought his blasts were concussive. God damn it, figure it out guys! You also have to escort shipmates to safety. I love these kinds of simple heroics in the midst of stopping a world ending ploy. Magneto manages to escape and makes a broadcast waging war against humanity. And with no time to waste, Professor X says, Shit, we're gonna need all the help we can get. And officially recruits minor Allison into the X-Men. Irresponsible bastard. What follows are a bunch of detours to get across what essentially is a pretty by the numbers X-Men story of stopping Magneto from ending homo sapien life. Stuff we've seen before, like the mansion getting raided by sentinels and going through the Weapon X facility where mutants are being experimented on. There's an interesting setup for a boss fight between Havoc and Cyclops. Their powers don't work against each other because they're brothers, so using any one of your special abilities is pointless. I thought this was a cool idea, but in my playthrough, Havoc just kinda gave up halfway through the fight and just stood there. Fight me, brother! So I just fucked him up with barrels. These games are at their best when we get to go to outlandish locations like the Astral Plane. This level is easily one of the best, since it's in a fun setting, and we get to play as an overpowered Professor X. All the frustrations of getting mobbed by enemies are gone when you can wipe out a whole group with one attack. The team goes to this realm to find out what's wrong with Colossus' sister, Ileana. She's in a coma, but they can't find anything physically wrong with her. This ends up being a trap set up by the Shadow King, an evil entity that dwells in the Astral Plane. He takes Professor X out of commission, leaving his psyche trapped in the astral plane and the X-Men without their leader. It's at this point that I realize the game gets a lot easier in its latter half. I mean, it makes sense since your team has been leveling up and increasing their stats, but it's also ass backwards to start a game so frustratingly hard 
that it discourages players to continue playing. Give me all the fodder enemies first that do low damage and allow for me to level up at a reasonable pace. Then start easing in the tougher enemies to match my HOMO SUPERIORITY. A couple of detours later involving a new type of sentinel being developed by General Kincaid who has a huge hate boner for mutants, and Magneto covering the earth and freaking asteroids blocking it from the sun's rays, jeez talk about a power move. The X-Men eventually figure out a way to make it back to the astral plane. Professor X escapes the astral plane after a big goofy kaiju fight against the Shadow King. This is the type of shit I'm here for. It's finally off to the big final mission where we storm asteroid M. Magneto makes three demands that must be met if mankind wants to see the sun again. All anti-mutant programs are to be stopped, he wants the island of Genosha as a sovereign nation, and General Kincaid's ass. The military responds by sending sentinels to space and firing upon asteroid M, thus sending the asteroid on a crash course towards New York City. Man are homo sapiens stubborn. Hashtag Magneto was right, am I right? After wiping the floor with Magneto with my overpowered team of in mutants, General Kincaid shows up with a weapon to surpass sentinels. A bigger sentinel. So while this fight mainly consists of mindlessly attacking an overpowered sentinel, I like that I ended up using just about every X-Men in the roster. This hunk of junk kept taking out every single one of my X-Pals, so running over to an extraction point to tag heroes with each fallen comrade makes it feel like the whole team is coming together for one big insurmountable task. Once the Super Sentinel is taken out, the rookie of the team steps up to stop the asteroid from crashing into Earth. And she just fucking kills everyone, man. It's a pretty messed up ending. One last thing. No, Allison, wait. Nah, just kidding, she did great. Mankind eats their words, and the world is safe thanks to the X-Men. But it's not a complete comic book video game without a stinger setting up the sequel. We get a quick scene of Apocalypse watching a long play of X-Men Legends, and promises part 2 will one-up it in every way. I'll hold you to that, Big Blue. Huh, so that's how it ends. Yep, it's not a bad story, nor is it groundbreaking, but much like Marvel Ultimate Alliance, it's about those character interactions and learning about the X-Men's history that sells it for me. I didn't want to hate this game, and I still don't, but it's clear that this was an early draft for better games down the line. It was lacking so many quality of life features that would make it more relaxing and accessible. Changing the health and respawn system ever so slightly would have made it a vastly different and more enjoyable experience, as proven by how beloved Ultimate Alliance was. But even if this game was flawed and even a little bit busted, we owe it a lot, because without it, we wouldn't have one of the best superhero games out there. Hey X, I bet you a hundred bucks I can get you to review X-Men Legends 2. No, no way, no, I'm not going near that game. I've been reviewing this one since January. I need a break. Darn, you win fair and square. See, I don't carry any cash. Is it cool if I pay you through Patreon? Sure, whatever. Hey, it says here I can request a review at the $100 tier. You keep your damn money!